Welcome to the AMTC 2021 interview series, where for this episode, I've been joined by Marcus Glasser from EOS. Hi, Marcus. Hi, Rachel. Thank you very much for joining us today for this chat. Um, so you have a really long and esteemed um, career in additive manufacturing. Um, from your point of view, what do you think has changed most since you started working for EOS in 1998? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, if I look back and take the first 15 years around about after 1998, I think there it was all about rapid prototyping. So all the innovation was happening because we wanted to have faster prototypes. We wanted to have uh, prototypes in better quality. But it was also the time where it was a lot of education, education of customers, of markets, coming more from a pioneer spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it transferred more to a yeah, manufacturing landscape until you have the, really the first manufacturing production projects. And uh, I think this also in 2004, for instance, at EOS, we had the first AM production project. It was actually with our metal printer and it was the dental copings and bridges. So it was this industrial I solution, remember. which was 2004, we have sold more than 150 systems meanwhile. It was really a big success. So this was more the history of the one first 15 years. If you look then back the last 10 years, then it was more the adoption from the technology further towards uh, additive manufacturing of steel production to reduce a bit the crazy innovation period and also think about how to use it intelligent. You know, intelligent innovation combined with a balance of robustness, repeatability, reproducibility of the systems. Because we also learned if you want to run production, it's great to have the most fancy technology and speed, but it's not very great if you then all parts have different characters, properties, tolerance, etc. Mm -hmm. So this is actually what happened the last 10 years. And I think today we're in a way that we have systems which are robust, systems which take many applications in sale production, whether it's now medical, whether it's aerospace, whether it's consumer industries, whether it's also maybe mobility. So there are now many of these sale production applications which are now set up. And now from there, we can take it to the next step. It's certainly been a journey. And I think um, EOS has been there from pretty much the beginning. Um, and we have been through periods of innovation. Um, but the applications are really important. Um, and that's where we're sort of seeing more industrialization. And I think that's a, it's a key theme here at the AMTC. But it, it's been a key theme for, for you as well, hasn't it, in terms of um, educating the market, um, like, like, like you said. But are there any specific sectors or maybe more applications that you can talk about that really have benefited from industrialization of AM? My, as if, if you look on the, let's say, major industries where we are successful and where we are quite advanced in manufacturing of cereal production, then I can say it's medical. So if you look yeah. on the medical yeah. implants, uh, there are many of the OEMs, but also the supply chain are producing really thousands of knee implants, patella implants, whatever, yeah. for, the, for, the, for people like you and me. Uh, so this is a really big, a not, big not success. Yet, not yet, yet. yet. <laughs> same, same for me, yeah, same for me, that's right. <laughs> Maybe one day. And, uh, and I think this is one real success case that we could really put our position in medical, yep. but also in aerospace, if you could look for the turbines, also the engine parts, which also at the end have also sustainability uh, benefit. But also if specifically now, if you look in the aircraft cabin, yes. yeah, I think this is a very interesting mm -hmm. part where we also have a strong focus on that you can replace cabin parts by 3D printing. So I talk now about polymer parts. Mm -hmm. So either you replace them by maintenance or you can bring in new innovations because you can have interesting designs. Take now, let's say the Expo in Dubai. Uh, you could now have an armrest mm -hmm. print Expo Dubai 2021, you know, and then you could implement it. So there's a lot of interior parts which can adapt it. And we have a belief also this will be future and just to take that a step further, um, my understanding is that these parts, particularly in the cabin, it's about lightweighting. It's not necessarily about 
functionality. It's about making the plane lighter um, yes. and the flighter by ratios. All, all yes, I think it's that. both. It's on the one hand that lightweight. Yes. Yeah, that you can, if you'd have a new design, but it's also replacement because, you know, it's also replacement means sustainable because if you have, let's say, a component where today you have to replace the entire component, you can just print maybe the broken component and exchange it. So that right. means you reduce also complexity in spare part management. So that, that, that's in terms of financial incentives then for the airlines, I suppose. Exactly. And yeah. also sustainability, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Sustainable. Well, that actually leads us very nicely on to our next question, which is sustainability is one of the key issues um, in this sector, but also in every sector at the moment, because, well, let's face it, the world is on fire at the moment. But sustainability, how do you, how do you see additive manufacturing supporting those real initiatives? I mean, if you look at sustainability, and I just mentioned before, looking on applications like in the aerospace industry, you know, turbine um, parts which are lighter designed, or also cabin parts which are lighter designed, it means, of course, you reduce the amount of kerosene. That means you also reduce the amount of CO2 emission. So that is all what we know since many years. Uh, I think this is a big benefit of the technology. But on the other hand side, we can also, with 3D printing, overcome the waste. So if, if you say we have, not the risk, we have not the technology where we take off material from a, from a raw material, mm -hmm. so we just set up a material. So it means we have also here a benefit. But also on the sustainable side, we see the need uh, to work on our technology. So the, many customers ask us, what's the sustainability based on your technology? So how is the energy, energy consumption? So we work really strongly yeah. also on our side but they also want to work together with the customer. So also if you look on this eyewear frame, so this is a bio-based material, polymer material today, but the next step will be a carbon neutral material. Oh. So that you really, uh, this is also on our product roadmap that we develop carbon neutral powders, yeah. uh, that we can have a big impact on the sustainability. But that means also, and this is a very big uh, initiative also from our CEO, from Barry Langer, we want to have an impact, and she calls it response of manufacturing. That means to make the world better yeah. by using digital manufacturing, by using technology and innovation, and also to work together with partners to, on this journey. Uh, we have also put this as a holistic view. Uh, we have also put this as a company purpose, sustainability. And we also say it's not a and a, a topic which EOS can sort out alone. We need partners, of we need course. government, we yes. need all the people. So all we have to have joint forces, a community where we work on this topic. And then the goal is to really drive us towards response manufacturing through industrial 3D printing solutions. So this is our target, what we want to achieve. And as I said, there are several aspects what we can do. And, you know, there are also communities out in the, in the, in the field today where we work together, for instance, on the eyewear, we work mm -hmm. together on a, on a paper where it describes exactly what is the CO2 emission reduction by using 3D printed eyewears. Actual facts and figures. Yeah, so this yeah. will come soon. Yeah. yeah. And also, we also have shared, we'll share all the roadmap for our sustainable materials, but also we'll also share data about our technology, what is the benefit today in terms of energy consumption and what is our target to make it better. And that they also take us itself in the responsibility to make a better product. Have you applied a timeline to that or is it just a sort of future looking initiative? No, you know, if you look on the sustainability programs, I mean, they're all running first kick 25, yeah, 20, yeah. 30. Yeah. So of course in this range, if you look now yeah. biodegradable material, you have to be also ready by this time. Okay. But also we want, of course, as fast as possible to adapt our machines. So always if a new machine generation is coming, it should be much better on the system. I mean, it, level. it does have a, a sense of urgency about it, but I suppose industries have to be realistic as well in terms of timelines. Exactly, because there is a lot of money in the game. Eh? And we, yeah. of course, we, we, and we heard also later today, you know, we have topics like reproducibility or mm -hmm. repeatability of parts. So this is a topic we have to do. Uh, we need on the other side work on sustainability, but we need to bring it in the right, as I said, in the right prioritization. Yeah. If we do so, then I think we can all have a benefit. And I think if we drive this, this technology sustainability, also the 
customers will have an advantage on the market by using sustainable technology. Okay, so in terms of all those initiatives and how all those issues come together, um, what what do you see as needs to happen to to accelerate adoption across all the different markets? You mean in regards to sustainability? No, or? no, no, just in general, to, to, to help companies to adopt okay. additive manufacturing. I mean, what, in general, what we have, we have a, a group is called Additive Minds. So this yes. is our consulting group. Mm -hmm. And what they do, they we use them also very much in the pre sale So let's say a company has interest in 3D printing or additive manufacturing. They can then also help the customer and say, okay, do we have an application which fits for 3D printing? If yes, how can we develop this application? How can we then also adapt this to your production? How can we scale up? Yeah, and 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 you know, how can we certify your production? And how can we also look into sustainability? Yes. For the company, yeah? Go, so this going is, you know, full an, circle, an entire yeah. entire uh, 360 degree round, yeah? and this we can support. This will do actually very nicely, and it helps also the customer to understand: Is this a technology they should have in house? or maybe not at all, or they should maybe use suppliers which have machines and then can serve them certain parts if the volume is not big enough. Okay, so that, that, that sort of draws us into su supply chain issues, I yeah. suppose. Because also the supply chain, I mean, if you look now in the market, it's quite interesting because yeah. today many OEMs have tested the technology, have maybe even first technology in-house for producing parts. But now actually the technology is coming more mature and now they say, well, now it's good time, I have to trust the technology, and I take another step to roll it out to my supply chain. And then it goes in a normal supply chain, plus maybe certain supply chain new players coming from the service provider business, which can take on and then really do the production based for the OEMs. And this is now the next step which will happen, I would say, next one to two years. Really? Yeah. Okay. So in terms of what you're seeing here, what, what's exciting you? Exciting for me here is, is clearly the audience. It's clearly the content, what you can see during the presentation. So understand what's the, the view of customer, what's the view of competitors, what's the view of universities, uh, what's the view of startups, what we heard last yesterday yes. night. Yeah, and some really how, exciting yeah, stuff. How, yeah. bring it, how can you bring it, or myself in this case now, to a context to orientate now ears in, in sales, for instance, to the next level. You know, what is now needed? What, what requirements do we have to solve? So it gives you also an orientation. I think this is also a big benefit of this AMTC conference, orientation, what to do next as, as in EOS. On the other side, of course, to meet people, to learn people, to learn network with the people, but also understand their needs and requirements and to have a really good exchange. And eventually, last one, <laughs> learn about funding projects because, of course, governmental institutions are also close connected. So what can they help to work on sustainable topics, on innovation centers, etc. You hit on a big one there, but we don't have much time left. But funding, that is a big one, isn't it? It's, it's how do we, we generate the funding in the right way to produce the right results? Do yeah, because any? it's really difficult. Because in Germany, you know, there is the 35C funding program, uh, which is for uh, automotive in this case. And it's easy to say as a funding, but, you know, uh, and even if you're deep dive in the funding programs, you know, then still the customer says, okay, I'm interested, well, how to do it? Yeah. You know, then it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a learning curve, but I think we can do it. And the, the complexity is that in UK or in France, or there are so many local fundings as well. So you have government fundings, local fundings, and to have an overview about all these structures is quite complex. And to have a, a help here and to have the right community to can help you how to access fundings to 3D printing actually not for the customer side, but also maybe for the EOS side, to work maybe together on sustainability, together in reusability uh, would, be, would be a good topic. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of events like this, I suppose, is, is it can bring all those threads together. Yeah, and maybe one last, I know, I need to stop, but one last, this was all <laughs> yesterday in the, in the afternoon session, there was the same topic, you know, who, and we heard it before, who is a super connector? Yeah? So who is really bringing everything together to understand, you know, these are these topics and how can we on a global base work on all these topics like sustainability, as I said, repeatability, etc. Mm. I think that's a more positive note to end on. 
Thank you so much for your time today, Marcel. Really appreciate it. It was a really nice pleasure. And hopefully we see us again. Yeah. Thank you.